Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. We're going to jump right in today because it's new bumper time, new front bumper time for the Toyota Tacoma. I've already removed the grill. That's pretty simple to do. Just unplug some of the lighting that I had. That's what's hanging all over the place. That really has nothing to do with this install. However, you do need to take the grill off. So, first things first, we need to go ahead and remove the license plate and the bracket or the holder. And then I'm going to go ahead and rip this off the front. That can be done by hand. And then the little crash bar thing underneath, the foam piece, whatever it is, that can also be done by hand. Apparently there are a couple little tabs under there. It doesn't matter. You're not going to reuse any of this anyway. So it's not really a big deal. In other words, I broke something. So we've cut that off. Next is this little crash thing right across here. You can see how flimsy that thing is anyway. Uh, there's just some little push tabs. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see them. But they're right here. You just kind of push in and pull out. And it kind of goes that way all the way across. There's little tabs that you just kind of push in. There. Didn't destroy anything on that one. Next up is going to be the crash bar here. Um, I can't decide. You have to do some cutting, of course, too. So I think we're going to go ahead and hold on uh, on this. Uh, and go ahead and do the cutting I need to do. Now, for the cutting. Not too complicated, although pretty uh, scary. What you do is you measure back 20 millimeters from this edge. Go ahead and put some tape on there first, obviously. Measure back 20 millimeters, mark it several spots, and you're going to connect the dots. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy. At this point, about right in here where the bend is, you're going to kind of stop at that line and connect right down here where it goes on down. And you're going to just follow this body panel on down here. So that's no big deal. The line's already there for you. But you have to connect from here up to that line you've drawn. And it's kind of a guess. I mean, you know, where do you connect? Down here, over here, up here, you know. Should be pretty obvious once you get going right off of this corner. And I will tell you, it pretty much is right in that corner. So if you leave a little bit extra, and you probably should leave extra so that you can adjust it if you need to, but if you do, you're going to end up coming back and trimming because it kind of goes right off where this point ends, right up to where your line is. I've got the line drawn. Hopefully you guys can see it. Shows up much better in person. But you're supposed to go about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch off the edge right here of the trim piece. Now I found a common razor blade is three quarters of an inch. So I used it uh, right against the edge to mark all of my line as I went. Now keep in mind this bumper is not perfectly straight. It curves. It has a curve to it. So your line is going to be a little bit curved as you go. Uh, went ahead, joined up to the right at the corner here and then on down to the bottom where I'll cut off. And another tip for you, right over here in this edge, you'll see that bar sticking out. That's because right behind where we're going to cut, there's a plastic piece. So I put that little thin strip of aluminum there so that when I'm cutting, I don't cut into that plastic piece. You don't have to worry about it once you get oh, about up in this area or so. There's nothing behind here that you can damage. Same thing on the other side. So, next up, I'm going to cut with a Dremel. I actually found that an oscillating tool cuts better, but a Dremel uh, is easier to control in cutting. If you have to do any trimming once you have it opened up, the oscillating tool works better. But, the Dremel is the way to go, in my opinion, even though it makes a heck of a mess. Let's go ahead and cut.
broke my first uh, cutting wheel, so we replaced it. We'll carry on. Okay, we've got the cut done. We're obviously, well, we're loose all the way across so far. Let's see, over here, I think I'm not. Which means I just have to kind of go back over a little bit. Something I don't want to do, but I'm uh, going to have to. Problem is, is that the plastic melts as you go and then it refuses, which is kind of a bad, um, not refuses to come off, refuses is being stick together. Come on, man. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just run back through the areas that needed here, and then we, we're done, for better or worse. Okay, just knocked a little bit off there in the corner, fell right down, no big deal. Now there's two 10 millimeter screws right here you have to remove that are attached to the crash bar, which is gonna come off anyway. And there we have it. That nasty piece is gone. Thank God. Now, before I clean this up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the crash bar. There are three bolts, three nuts on each side. You need to remove those. And there is a screw or a little orange piece. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there. Squeeze that together and pull this part up. And then the crash bar, once you have these nuts removed, will come right off. Real quick, a little tip for you before I get into this. I did disconnect the negative side of the battery. Uh, we are messing with the bumper in the front end. You know, you crash, airbags go off. Highly unlikely, but why take the risk? Just disconnect the negative terminal. So, go ahead and get these off. It takes a uh, 14 millimeter socket, by the way. And apparently my ratchet doesn't have enough oomph, so we're going to have to use a little human power, I guess. Okay, now we can revert to uh, machine. <laughs> dump it out once we get the bar off. Now remember on each side you have those little orange push things. Uh, there is one on each side so I have to squeeze that together to release this bar. You won't be able to see it because it's too confining under there but let me do that. Alright that takes care of that. Those little push things by the way oh, there went that bolt or nut um, is what holds the fender on and on a piece underneath there so I did remove the screw to release pressure there's a screw underneath but you want to make sure you put that back in uh, because that's what kind of secures your, your bumper there or your trim piece I should say so you want to make sure you put that back in don't leave it off next up you have to remove these I guess connectors, supports, blocks, whatever you want to call them for the crash bar. And there are, looks like three uh, nuts on each side you have to take off. And I believe this is what your uh, bumper is actually going to be attached to. So let's go ahead and get these nuts off. I do have a, a light bar connected here via these brackets that connect to those bolts. So obviously this light bar has to go.
Wow. Goes those and the light bar is intact. All right, I have smoothed off the edges. Uh, it should look fine when it's covered. The only thing I kind of nicked a little bit right here. I'm hoping the weather stripping will cover that up. Otherwise, there's a couple nicks over here. Um, yeah, shouldn't be any problem. The weather stripping should cover it. And this is plastic, so it's not like it's going to rust, right? Only two spots that I kind of screwed up. Eh. Now, next up is to move this power steering cooling coil. You've got two bolts, one here and one right there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use these relocator brackets to move it back about two inches. So the stud is going to go through where the bracket is on the uh, cooling unit now, and then this hole is going to be a new screw it's going to go where the existing ones are now to get this thing back out of the way a little bit. Now, if you don't have enough play, and you probably will not, there is a, another bolt right behind this cover, which I'll show you if I have to do it, um, or either way I'll show you, uh, that you have to remove. That bolt is not replaced. play to move this thing back. And there's the bolt right there and you just have to remove this little curtain thing. It just has these little push pin things in it. You can see there's one right there. You just pop those out with a little pry tool or something and then they'll just push back in the holes. Now as I mentioned you're not going to be able to put that bolt back in uh, because it simply won't fit. What I did last time is I kind of wired through the hole in that bracket and then went through this hole right here just to kind of secure it from bouncing around. I mean it's there for a reason, right? So we need to pull that off. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 12 millimeter. Let's see. Looks like I might be no it is. It's 12 millimeter. So I just kind of wanna kind of wanna go ahead and remove that and that will give us the play that we need to be able to move that cooling coil back. We've got the coil relocated and it is a pretty tight fit, but you can get wrenches uh, on all of the nuts and bolts to be able to tighten it down. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna fit at first, but trust me, it does. And it's not touching the radiator here. It looks like it might be, but you can see some light through there. Uh, so it is not touching, that's good. And then there's still plenty of circulation room up here. I can get my hand back there, so it's not right up against the radiator. Should be fantastic. Now, let me show you what I did over here. Since we can't put the bolt back into the bracket that holds this line, I just put some wire through the hole of the bracket and then bolted it down against the bolt that it was through before. That is very stout. It's not going anywhere. Now a matter of just Fastening this little cover back in should just push back in. Not sure if I can do it one-handed or not. Let's see. Yeah. That went in too easily. So did that one. Yeah, it's back in, but I get the feeling these are kind of a one-way only. So if that bugs you, you may want to replace those. I think it's going to be okay though. I'll keep my eye on it. So, next up is to go ahead and test fit the bumper uh, before I go ahead and put the weather stripping on. We're done with all the relocating and stuff, by the way. One other thing I want to mention, the directions are a little gray in this area. You have the skid plate down here, the factory skid plate, and even the TRD skid plate. Tells you to remove those. I did not remove the TRD skid plate on my last truck and I didn't have a problem. 
Uh, so I'm not going to remove the factory skid plate here either. I don't think there's any issue. We'll find out when I do my test fit, but it should be okay. I don't know why there would be a problem because you can put it back on. I did a test fit. I'm happy with the fit. One cut. I'm not cutting anymore. I think we're there. So now it's a matter of putting this trim piece around, which is going to make this look so much better. Uh, I'm going to start on the passenger side. Right down here in the corner, I might even loosen this a little bit. I think I might. I don't know. Uh, to be able to make sure I can get it in, and then I'll put the bolt back in. I think that's the best way to do it. This just sandwiches over the uh, edge like so. It just pushes on. It is uh, metal, so when you go to cut the excess off the other side, which I'll do, uh, you have to use some kind of uh, metal cutting scissor or wire cutter or something. Okay, got the trim all on, and man, did it come out nice. Better than I did the first time I did this on the magnetic gray metallic truck. Uh, this actually looks really good. There's a little waviness here or there, but that might be the material itself. I don't know. So I'm quite pleased with it. And how much better does that look with the trim piece on it? It's awesome. Now, real quick, best way to cut this stuff, four tools. I used these scissor type things. Uh, they worked really well down here towards the bottom. You don't want to cut it at the top. Most leverage down here, of course. But it just cut right through this stuff. No problem. So, now, we're there. It's time to put the bumper on and bolt it down. Now, this you needed to save uh, six of the nuts that you took off of the crash bar. Uh, I've got way more than that over here uh, because they're going to hold the bumper on through the uh, studs that go through the bumper. So, let me grab the bumper, we'll get it on, and then there's one more part to it, and that is this long bolt. Uh, that goes underneath. This is going to be threaded, I believe, through this hole. I'm not sure which hole it is. It's either this one or this one or maybe that one. I don't remember. Uh, but we'll know when we have the uh, bumper on there because we'll be able to see it, obviously. We have reached the end. The bumper is, of course, on. The last thing we have to do is put that wretched front license plate on and they do provide in the kit a couple of uh, these plastic things, nylon inserts, whatever they are, to be able to attach the license plate. So these, ideally, just push in like so. Pretty easy, right? Especially compared to the entire project. And everything lines up, which it should. And my screws fit, which they do. And then we just have to tighten it down and we're done. Awesome. Next up, we got to take it for a ride. Well, we got to test the lights. And I know you're just dying to see this front light. And looking at it now, to me, it looks like it's pointing up, uh, which I don't want. So there probably will be an adjustment coming for that. We'll see once we get this incredibly complicated license plate on here. So, that is the finished look, excluding the D-rings. Um, got to find some D-rings to put on there. I'm going to go with orange, I think, uh, just to kind of tie everything together. That's the idea. I see a wire hanging back behind there. Might have to lower that a little bit, I think. Anyway, that is the entire project. Let's test the lights, and uh, we'll be done. So, everything is working. The lights up top, the new light bar, the Raptor type lights, the Rob Motive light, everything is on. That is awesome. That's it. That's the install. That's the video. There'll be some pictures at the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever done this mod or what you think of it after you see those pictures at the end, of course.